I'm Kristen, and you're listening to Podcast and Amplify, a podcast for women entrepreneurs who want to amplify their voice and brand through podcasting and grow a wildly successful business. I'm the executive producer and host and an entrepreneur, and I love helping women grow their visibility, mindset, and business to the next level. Each week, I share tips on how to launch and leverage your podcast, and I bring on the very best business leaders to give you advice on how to build your business empire. Let's amplify your voice and business. Welcome back to Podcast and Amplify. So I'm excited to bring this special episode to you. It's actually a bonus episode. If you're a longtime listener, you know that we go on break during the summer, but I always like to pop in and do these surprise special episodes. And I thought, who better than to bring on (laughs) than Helen Thacker? She's a sales and business coach. And we connected over Instagram and I think we just have some really aligned, a really aligned approach to how we approach our businesses and working with people and helping them to amplify their message. So welcome, Helen. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Kristen. It's an absolute honor to be on the bonus episode. And yeah, thanks everyone for listening. Yeah. So can you tell us just a little bit about your business and what it is that you do? Absolutely. Yes. So I, as you quite rightly said, I am a sales and business coach. And what I do is I help course creators to really simplify your business and grow your income way beyond the six figure mark by mastering sales and messaging skills, which I believe are the absolute prerequisite skills to have if you're going to achieve that level of success. And so I like to ask my guests this question. So what is a pivotal moment that's gotten you to this version, this iteration of who you are and where your business is? Yeah, absolutely. So there have been a few, as is often the way on our entrepreneurial journey. I I think your listeners will resonate. I'm sure you will as well, Christine, that through that journey, um, you refine, you clarify, you get more specific about what you specialize in, where your superpowers are, and really what lights you up as well. And we talked about this when you were on my podcast as well, which was a fantastic episode. And just about having that real kind of alignment and feeling like you were doing what's right for you as well. And it is definitely an experience it's a journey and I found that that refinement and that clarification only comes over time it comes with practice of actually starting and honing your craft but I had a huge kind of light bulb moment about a year ago actually and um, it was a moment when I realized that I'm in my mid-40s okay and I was still holding myself back from really speaking my truth and not you know, not, I was still afraid to kind of say my opinions, my beliefs. I was really worried about kind of what other people would think. And I remember very clearly, it was a Friday night, I possibly had a glass of red wine, but I was, I was really, I remember it clearly thinking, this is so ridiculous. Like, this is absolutely ridiculous. Like, how much longer am I going to go on in my life? Like, am I going to be 50? Am I going to be 60? Worrying about what other people think because of the actions that I take and the things that I say. And it was like the most crazy, I was laughing at myself. And it was just, okay, something's got to change. And it immediately did. I stopped really caring about what other people thought. And this then translated into the way I run my business, into the clarification and my polarization in my messaging, you know, really standing up for my beliefs in my industry. And it really allowed me to go further down that journey of refining and defining exactly what it is that I truly love to do and where my skills and expertise lie. And that has absolutely brought me to where I am right now, for sure. So as you're describing that, I 100% relate, and I'm sure listeners can too, of, you know, getting to that point where you're just like, yeah, how much longer am I going to let? the fear of other people's opinions about me, what people are going to say, how they're going to perceive me, dictate what I do. 
or don't do or say or don't say. Um, so definitely can relate to that. And I think as you get older, I'm in my early 40s, you definitely get closer and closer to this place of like wanting to give no Fs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I just do not care. Yeah. About your opinion. Don't share it with me. Um, and so the word that came up in my mind when you were speaking was like liberated. That mm-hmm. must feel so liberating to oh, yeah. just kind of like take that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Almost like shackles off, right? Of like caring yeah. and considering um, what other people think. So how has that affected your business? So like I said, it has allowed me to stop doing what I thought I should be doing, stop copying other people who were ahead of me and copying their success. And I understand that because we all do that. The lo- you know logic dictates that we see success happening for somebody else. And we think, right, okay, if I just emulate them, do exactly what, they, what they're doing, the success will happen for me as well. And I stopped doing that. And I realized that I stopped looking at other people's Instagram accounts or other kind of places for content just for inspiration. I was actually was coming out of me naturally. It was pouring out of me. And it really allowed me to find the thing that I just lights me up, the thing that gets me out of bed in the morning that I'm so passionate about doing. And it completely changed the direction of my business. And it it gave me that freedom, like you said, that liberation is a fantastic way to describe that freedom to do and be exactly who I want. And I love to encourage other women to do this in fact it's one of my kind of brand values is allowing people to be seen and heard for who they are because I know the impact it had on me and I we did talk about this when we you know we've talked spoken about this before but it's so important because we so we we do hide ourselves and when it comes to from a from a business perspective as a messaging specialist an expert you know this is how I help women and men that I work with to really translate what's in their head and actually get it out there into the world and that comes through that clarity and that comes through that authenticity of being exactly who you are so it's all kind of come together so nicely in the way I work the way I support other entrepreneurs to have success and yet my entire kind of my own myself as well you know my my confidence it's worth saying that as well, you know, my own confidence, absolutely. Yeah. It it quadrupled, you know, or more. Yeah. I think when we can own our gifts and really see how special they are, it does build our confidence, right? Because we just can move through the world as us and what feels natural and authentic. So I'm curious, so you're leaning into your sort of authenticity, your being seen for who you are and what's really important to you. For me, when I help podcasters launch their podcasts, it's a similar approach, right? Like what's your unique voice that what's the message that only you can say because of your life experience, who you are as a human being? Do you find that's an important aspect to helping people figure out what their differentiator is and also is that sort of the unique thing about your approach to marketing and sales or what would you say that is? Yeah, it is definitely one of the unique parts to my framework. So I have like a, a sales success framework. So when my clients come to me at whatever level that is, usually they are entrepreneurs who are, you know, they're stuck at kind of the five, six K mark a month. And they just, they're doing absolutely everything that they can, you know, they're, they're consistent, they have a great mindset, the strategies in place, they are experts in their field. And it breaks my heart because they really deserve to get their fantastic offers out there, start making the impact that they so like passionately want to make. And the first step in that framework, it's the three part sales success with three C's, is clarity. It's clarity, connection and content. And that clarity piece is the foundation, I believe, in everything. So we talk, and I'm talking about clarity across the board, clarity in your niche, as you just said, clarity in the direction of your business so that you have the confidence, but clarity in offers, um, and clarity for your clients and your future clients as well, because you need to know the direction you're going. You can then move forward in your business with confidence. But you also need to portray that clarity so that your future clients are so kind of dialed into exactly what it is that you can do to help them. What exact results they are going to get from the exact process 
that you have that might be unique. So we clarify everything. We like really kind of fine tune and simplify absolutely everything. That's the first stage. And I am all for simplicity. That is a whole other conversation, but my businesses run very simply and I try and encourage my clients to also do that as well. But, you know, that clarity is, yeah, it's the very, very first piece in that whole process. Absolutely. Yeah, that makes sense that that's the foundation because um, that's how how I help my podcast clients as well. It's like, if you don't know who you're speaking to, what it is you want to say, how it's going to help your this podcast can help your business. It's like that overwhelm can creep in really quickly. But I get like as business owners, like you mentioned earlier, we see everyone doing all these things and, and so we can tend to like cherry pick, oh, I can do that and I can do a course and then I can do this. And it does, it can create like a really muddled experience for the potential client. So I love how you help people to really get clear across the board on on all these aspects of their business to sell and create messaging that's going to resonate with the right people and get them drawn in. Other than maybe having too many offers or too many conflicting messages, What are some other mistakes that you see that entrepreneurs commonly make? Hey, I hope you're enjoying this conversation. I wanted to pop in real quick to let you know about something I created that I think you'll really enjoy. So I know you're a visionary with a purpose. You want to create deeper connection with your community. You want to call in those soul clients and you want to share your message in a way that feels really aligned. I created a free workshop. It's called Launch a Binge Worthy Podcast. And it's all about how to create a heart-centered podcast that will attract those soul aligned listeners and grow your business. You can go to podcastandamplify.com to get access. All right, friend, back to the show. So yes, from a sales point of view, it is absolutely overcomplication and it's not having a clear sales process. So people kind of rock up onto Instagram. Like I said before, they come with expertise. Perhaps they are ex-lawyers, ex-therapists, perhaps they are nutritionists, fitness coaches. And they have this incredible wealth of knowledge and experience, but they have never been taught how to sell. So they come and they start creating content and put it out there and they don't have any kind of sales expertise. And that's why I am absolutely passionate and I have 100% rock solid belief that sales and messaging are the prerequisite skills to success. You know, you're going to get stuck. You can have all the expertise in the world and the most incredible offers and a strategy in place. You think I'm going to take my business to multiple seven figures. But if you can't sell, you're not going to get people over that final hurdle and put dollars in the bank. So you need a very clear sales process. And I love to help my clients set that up. Keeping a business simple as well without, yes, let's not try and like copy somebody else's business model just because it looks like they're making a lot of money. They might have been around for a lot longer than you. They might be in a completely different industry to you that might not be appropriate. And it's about looking at what's right for you and your lifestyle as well. And the kind of business that you really want to create for yourself. I don't work Mondays and Fridays. Okay. I have a very simple business. I have two core offers and, you know, it's working and I have a scalable offer. So I can spend 10 weeks a year traveling abroad with my family. You know, I've created that deliberately and intentionally So that overcomplication is something I see so much. But when it comes to messaging, I mean, how long have we got on this podcast? Because there are so many things. And I actually have like a checklist of things that I go through with my clients. Often they come to me for just like a a sort of 75 minute quick kind of messaging kickstart audit type thing. And there are a couple of really common mistakes. Um, And just kind of share these with your listeners. If you are listening and you might want to kind of Go back to your own kind of content and just make sure that you're not doing these as well. But the first thing is being specific. So again, it's all around clarity, all circling around this word here. But being very specific in your messaging is so essential. So talking to a specific client or about a specific problem, talking in your messaging using specific language that's relevant to the right level of client that you want to call in. You know, is this an experienced client? Or is this a client who is just starting out? You need to be very specific. Using specific emotions as well. 
specific moments when your clients are challenged and talking about those specific points in their day when they might feel a certain way and actually putting that into your messaging and connecting with those um, with that kind of content. So that's the first thing. And then the other thing that I see so often, and it's really quite sort of simple when you think about it, but so few people actually make their audience aware that they even have a problem or an improvement to make in their life. So your audience might be scrolling past your Instagram because they don't think they need you. They're like, I don't, I'm fine, I'm good, I don't have that problem. So it's your job as someone who is selling something that can absolutely enhance or change their life is to make them aware that there is even a problem that exists in the first place. You've got to highlight that. And you do that just by basically explaining the, you know, empathizing with them that you understand why things are the way they are. You understand why the things they are doing right now are perhaps causing them not to move forwards in their life and then explaining the alternative solution. That is when you are going to stop the scroll. They're going to start thinking, oh my goodness, it's Kristen inside my head. She's just literally described what I do, how I feel. And then it positions you as the authority because you have suddenly provided this alternative solution that they hadn't really opened their eyes to yet. And there you are, you are the guru, you're the go-to. And that is so important. Um, and again, I do this as part of like, I have a, another acronym where I, I talk about throwing gas on your messaging. G for grab attention, A for authority build, and, and S for sell and articulate the value of your offer. And it is to, it's that piece where you're going to grab attention, that first piece, because you're going to absolutely draw people in when you can show them that there is an improvement to make. So that is a thing that so few people do. And it's like, it seems so obvious when you think about it because you've got to show the need. You've got to demonstrate the need. And a lot of the time people just pump out educational content or, you know, five ways to do this, three ways to improve that. And people don't think they need it because they think they're okay. They're doing okay. But if you can just show the need, as well as educational content, of course, you are absolutely, you'll be, you'll, you'll just... It will rocket your business. It really, really will. Yeah, I love, you know, your suggestion of, well, highlighting that, you know, entrepreneurs, you know, they their messaging can tend to lack the specificity in all these different areas. And you also gave us a tip of how to, you know, how important it is to really connect the problem <laughs> to listeners. And I think throughout this, it's like connecting the dots. Anytime you can connect the dots for your potential client you know, like leaving those breadcrumbs, guiding them to uh, you and what you, how you can support them. So you kind of gave us some mistakes and also some uh, tips there as well. Before I ask you our signature question, can you give our listeners maybe like one tip, like if they could change a small thing in their messaging tomorrow, that would really sort of dial things up or help them to connect with their ideal clients? Yeah. So I think I, a lot of people don't actually kind of show enough proof of success because we do feel, particularly as women, we don't want to shout about our success. We feel like it's kind of being arrogant or big headed. We don't want to show off. But your clients need to hear about successes that you have got for other clients previously. So I just want to make sure that everyone includes that as a core part of their content strategy. Um, and people do miss that out because, oh, I don't want to show off. I don't want to, you know... But you must, because you're just showing that you are the person that can get that, that client the result. And everyone wants that third party validation. So yeah, definitely include that. Yeah, definitely. I used to shy away from that as well. But then I realized that what I was looking for as a you know potential client for someone else was, okay, well, you can tell me these things, but like, where's the proof? <laughs> Who else is going to attest to this? So just thinking as sometimes we can think of ourselves as you know, consumers or buyers, like what do we like to see? Lastly, I would really love to know what is your superpower? Well, that's a good question. So I think my superpower is my fearlessness because um, I have a tendency, I don't know whether it's something that was just part of my genetic code or I have always just jumped into doing things without kind of really thinking things through, but in a positive way. 
you know, this is the fourth business that I've started from scratch and taken two to six figures. They've all been in sales over the last 21 years. And I've been, a, you know, I've been a solo entrepreneur that entire time. But I've always just jumped into each one of those businesses thinking, I'm going to figure it out. And I think that fearlessness um, to just have that kind of trust that I will figure things out. And I always have. I mean, I have the strongest work ethic and I have a lot of resilience. So that helps me get to my goals. But I think I see a lot of entrepreneurs coming to me and they think, and I'm sure you've seen this as well, Kristen, with what you do, like they've got to have everything set up. Everything's got to be perfect. You know, the podcast cover has got to be done and the name and all the tech behind it. It's the same, you know, when people come to me with their their coaching businesses or their online businesses, I'm like, no, we don't have to have everything in place yet. And the fearless, that fearlessness or lack of can hold people back from just getting started. As we know, we you know we we know all those quotes. We hear about this all the time, but it really is the experience that you need to have under your belt for you to like move forward, make mistakes, fail, learn. That's the only way you're going to progress. And you really do have to start before you are, before, way before you are ready. So I am definitely blessed with that as my, yeah, one of my superpowers for sure. I love that superpower. It's so uh, helpful in in being an online entrepreneur, solopreneur. And you're making me think, you know, you also must be, besides fearless, you must be comfortable with discomfort. Yeah. I, I And I have accepted, like when I started my coaching business, for example, I literally told myself, okay, so we're in for two to three years of learning mode. Are you ready for that? Like you have to accept that. And it's got clearer and clearer every single time I've started a business. But yeah, that level of discomfort, you absolutely have to. Yeah, I'm a, I, you can ask my kids, like I make the biggest fool of myself. I'm not afraid (laughs) to go out there and fall flat on my face. I embarrass the heck out of them. You know, I really do. So I, I, yeah, I really, I can sit in that discomfort quite, quite comfortably for a while. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And it's always great to have, well, first of all, stepping back, you must be such a great role model to your kids. Um, you know, showing them how to move through the world world fearlessly and having someone to support you on your journey doing these uncomfortable things, you know, like sales and messaging is a really great way if you're not so fearless and you can maybe overthink things or, you know, have these expectations that, like you said, things need to be, all the ducks need to be in a row before you start. Um, So having someone like Helen to guide you through that could be a really great bridge to getting to that next level. I know that's what helped me. And yeah, just being comfortable. I I tell my clients what helped me with my podcasting being so uncomfortable was I told myself they're only going to get better from here. So I think having that mindset, like you said, around like being okay with the messiness and being okay with the the mistakes is so, so important. Um, So thank you were awful I mean like my first story don't, don't <laughs> listen don't listen to my podcast just start from the, the latest <laughs> right, exactly start from newest and maybe work your way back but not too far <laughs> yeah <Definitely. laughs> um so thank you so much for being here Helen I know that you know I just love your like holistic approach to sales and messaging and I get the sense from you like you approach it in such a empathetic way in being authentic. And I think that's just fantastic. So I'm, I'm so happy to share this conversation with our listeners. If anyone wants to connect with you, where would be the best place? Oh, thanks, Kristen. So yeah, just come and say hi on Instagram. I'm sure you'll put the link in the show notes, but it's just at Helen Thacker. And um, if you just tell me that you have listened to this podcast, I will happily just drop you a couple of quick tips on your content, of course. And then there is my podcast too, Purpose, Potential and Power. So yeah, go and have a listen. And I hope I can help you with um, some sales and messaging tips. Great. Well, thanks again for, for being here and we will catch you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to this episode of Podcast and Amplify. If you love the show, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And the best way to support this show is by sharing, rating and reviewing the podcast. 
For those of you who leave a review, you'll get the chance to win a 30-minute strategy session or a mini audit of your existing podcast. Thanks for listening. And remember, your voice and what you have to offer is needed in the world. Until next week, take care.